Hello everybody and welcome to a classic review out of 2005. Now this is the Wookiee Catamaran set, uh, set number 7260, which retailed for $49.99 back in 2005, but will catch you about three to four hundred dollars if you want to find it new sealed in box in 2022. Now I just really enjoy these older sets, just the classic feel to it. This is one of my favorites from 2005, just the era where I really started getting Lego Star Wars sets and I just absolutely love this one. Uh, I've always wanted it and finally was able to pick it up for a decent price, got it for like $100. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just kind of dive into the elements of this set, this just classic nostalgic feel to the figures, the build, and let's go ahead and start off by taking a look at the minifigures. One of the best parts of this set is just that you get an amazing minifigure selection. Uh, there's quite a few exclusive figures in this. The Yoda itself is hard to find. The Luminara is exclusive to the set, as well as the Swamp Troopers over here, the 442nd Battalion clones are exclusive as well. And those actually go for quite a bit of money now. Those are probably $30, $40 figures on their own or more if you can find it that cheap. Uh, the Chewbacca is pretty common and then the Wookiee Warrior, I believe only came out in 7258, the uh, like Wookiee Attack set from 2005 that year as well. And we're gonna start off by taking a look at the Clone Troopers. So obviously this is the era of the phase two cutout visors uh, when clones had a black head underneath. So there's nothing under there. It's just made to uh, make it the visor pure black so you can see through into the back of the head. Anyways, uh, printing is pretty simple on it actually. It's just the normal phase two clone trooper from the era with green printing put over it. So not a major difference there from a standard phase two clone trooper, but definitely desirable. Uh, this is the only set it came in and I believe it actually was canon at one point in time. It's the 442nd Siege Battalion clone in canon. Um, that was technically Legends, I do believe, so I don't know if it's canon anymore, but this is a real clone trooper. It wasn't just one that they had made up. The Lego company actually borrowed concept art and this was a genuine figure. He has just the plain blaster here with the uh, uh, the megaphone blaster with the kind of trans blue piece on it and then the back printing is pretty simple just a couple green uh, uh, accents there on the back up next the wookie warrior is a pretty simple figure but it uses the same headpiece as the chewbacca minifigure also present in the set uh, this wookie warrior just comes with a spear uh, for a weapon and really some nice molding on it actually and some nice printing with that mold i have actually always really liked this figure uh, which even continues over onto the back as well. So it's, like I said, it's a simple figure, but it's actually got some pretty nice detail all worked into it as well. And the Chewbacca figure is just the classic, the one that you'd expect that they used for all different episodes, uh, episodes three through six back in the day. Uh, it comes with the old medieval style crossbow that they just used for him and his cartridge belt on there as well. Again, same kind of mold. Uh, for the headpiece over just the, the legs and the body. Uh, and then on the back side again, just kind of some more, more detail. The cartridge belt continues down the back. And up next, this really is a classic figure. When I think of some of my favorite figures from the area, I definitely think of this Yoda figure here. Uh, this actually is technically the episode uh, five version of Yoda that they always use. They put these in the prequel sets as well. So uh, the episode two sets would have had this Yoda included as well, even though it's technically with the flute necklace and the printing, it is technically an episode five Yoda, uh, but they used it for, like I said, episodes two and three back in the day as well. Uh, he comes with just with the walking stick and his lightsaber. Again, the chrome hilted lightsaber, great era for that. I don't know why Lego can't do that now, especially because they can probably afford that. Um, it's just classic. I just really like the, the chrome hilted lightsaber blades, but yeah, a uh, little bit of back printing on there. Uh, nothing too special in that regard because it is 2005, remember, but the head is really interesting as well. And just like the the ABS plastic that's molded out of it. It's just, it's very classic. It doesn't, he's not a whole lot of detail on the face or anything. It's pretty simple, uh, but definitely enjoy that figure. Then for the other exclusive figure in the set, we have Luminara. Unfortunately, this is supposed to be a light up minifigure, but the lightsaber hilt itself broke off again. It's old, it's what, 17 years old now, and just getting figures that old that still work generally not a thing. You can replace the batteries, which I'm gonna to try to do. And maybe I can find some way to jerry-rig up a lightsaber back on there. But just for demonstrative purposes, I just have Yoda's lightsaber in her hand, uh, but she would have her own 
lightsaber that lights up when you press down on the head here, but that unfortunately is not working. Real simple printing and then just kind of nothing on the back, uh, just kind of the headdress on there and stuff. Um, I remember using this figure in the uh, Lego Star Wars Complete Saga from 2006, so nostalgic in itself as well, but again, light up lightsaber, so the legs and arms don't really come apart or anything, or the head, so really not a whole lot of, of uh, custom ability there, but you know, it works, it's a cool figure, it's classic, and I don't really care about the, the working value of it, I just have it on display anyway, so uh, definitely cool to still have. Now getting into the build itself, up here we have the first ever rendition of the Republic Swamp Speeder. Uh, so definitely a cool build. I really like the era where they just didn't use any uh, like uh, stickers. Everything is all printed. So really some cool, unique pieces on this one. It's pretty simple, all things considered, but it's really effective. And I just really like the look of it. I actually kind of favor it, maybe just for its classic look, but I do like it as much, if not more than the newer versions. I think there was one in 2011 or 2010, and then there was like the uh, uh, Kashyyyk Trooper Battle Pack version, but this one is a good size. I think it's pretty accurate to the in-universe build, uh, but some cool features on it, I guess. There's not a whole lot that you can do with these older builds, but there's an engine on the back that you can see here, and uh, it just kind of rotates. It doesn't actually do anything. There's no wheels or anything underneath to actually move this as there would be the newer version that you can steer using this back engine. Uh, so no real functionality with that or anything, just some uh, bumpers here on the bottom to stabilize it when you set it down. But the sort of like uh, stabilizing axle out to the front here is pretty simple as well. It's just hooked on by one single clip and then a, a Technic plate up front there. Um, no real control panels on this at all either. So you set your minifigures there and there's not really anything for them to do. Uh, just again, a real basic Technic build from 2005. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really cool. There's some nice little details. I love the color. The uh, red, Republic red color is probably my favorite Lego brick color. Uh, for some reason, I don't really know why. I just really like it, nostalgic. And just this build is something that I've always really enjoyed. Once you have your figure seated there, there is kind of some room with uh, these uh, hold pieces, these hold studs, these hollow studs, should I say, of the Technic plates in the middle, where you can stick the blasters on there. So kind of operates as a little bit of a, a rack, if you will, to hold their blasters. Or another real common way is you can just stick the uh, studded plate in the back just right onto the back so you can just set your blaster on the back there But I do think setting them up in the middle Probably looks a little bit better and then the cannons on the front are surprisingly good um, I like the look of them. There's no function to them There's nothing that actually shoots out of them or anything like the newer versions Which I actually like just because again display value looks a little better when there's no weird color sticking out that from the missiles or whatever Anyways, uh, these are surprisingly sturdy a lot of these older builds using these cone pieces fall off very very easily But you really can grab a hold of this without it falling off too much. So like I appreciate that uh, the ATTE over there like the, this little uh, cone plate just falls off all the time. I lose so many of those pieces. So having to find these red pieces would be difficult. I'm glad that they stay on there well. And then also gives you with the Technic pieces just a full range of motion too. Uh, so very nice 360 degrees of motion on either end there. So very nice build. I like it. I think it's great for especially just this era. It's just one of my favorite classic 2005 builds. And to be honest for, with you, I think that almost the love for the clones and the Swamp Speeder overshadows the actual main build of the set. So we're just going to get this out of the way and actually look at the Wookiee Catamaran itself. Uh, this obviously had an appearance in Episode 3 real briefly. I think it's actually the machine that the Wookiees used to drop off onto the Corporate Alliance tank droid. Uh, in episode three when they like place the explosives and then jumped away or whatever. Uh, so this does have some screen time. It's not real prominent. Um, I just really remember it more for the Lego build. So yeah, cool build, uh, really classic as well. And this is where really the bulk of the features in the set are. So up front, there's obviously a propeller that spins. And in fact, they use two propeller blades for it. So very interesting there, but it gives you a full kind of kind of spin to it. So that's always fun just to sort of mess around with, but the build itself uses a lot of Technic parts. There's a lot of uh, uh, real Technic plating to it, and it makes it feel a little bit flimsy, I'm not gonna lie. You can see there's kind of uh, uh, some play to it, which um, obviously if this wasn't for a display, you would lose parts very, very easily. 
even just like these side panels fall off very easily. Not a real good way to grip it other than maybe with this top, those Technic parts help it kind of stabilize itself. But yeah, uh, the build itself obviously just has two of the uh, kind of side canoes, I guess you could call them, that are attached to the actual propeller. So yeah, uh, you can obviously see what George Lucas was going for with the more nomadic style build that the wikis would use with modern technology, such as a propeller to actually let the thing fly, right? This doesn't just float like a, a catamaran uh, boat. This actually has a capability to it as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some nice room in there. It, it's a bigger build than I thought it would be before I had it. Uh, you can really stack up quite a few figures in here. You can really play with all of the figures in the set in that. Uh, lots of studded area you can really stack that up as much as you want uh, so yeah definitely roomy and the build itself is actually somewhat enjoyable maybe it's just because it uses older parts that are real easy to build with uh, not a whole lot of the newer smaller parts and stickers and stuff it's just classic so I actually really enjoyed that aspect but like I said there is plenty of room to just stack all of your minifigures right in there and they all fit in without any modification they can even just hold on to their weapons you really just kind of have to raise their arms up a little bit so that they don't run into the uh, edge itself like they have to have their arms over the wall or whatever but uh, other than that yeah they they really do fit in there quite uh, quite nicely if i can get this one to stand but the features aren't just the propeller and capacity to carry minifigures um, there are some simulated bombs on the back here that you would in theory drop if this was actually in universe However, those don't actually do anything, they're just there for looks, which actually is kind of a nice detail that they included on there. Uh, but the, the features in itself um, pertain to the missile launcher in the front, as well as these rubber band Technic parts in the back. So you can load up a couple bombs, if you can see those right here. Uh, see if I can actually drop them out. But yeah, so anyways, there's kind of like a little carrying capacity in the back here. Oops, I just dropped one. Anyways, uh, you just load your bombs in the back there. Uh, and they just sit in there loosely, so if you turn it upside down, they will fall out. However, they will not fall out the bottom, so it's secure on that end. And then there's just a rod that goes to that build itself, and it's rubber banded in there. So if you pull on this uh, little stud here, it drops it out just like that. This opens up the bottom and then it falls out. And then this actually just nicely closes up right on the bottom, and then you can reload it. But that's on either end, so there's two two bomber capabilities on either end of the canoe right there. Then in the front, uh, really unfortunately, I am missing the missile for this. I actually have it somewhere. Uh, I just cannot find it for the life of me, but I have this to kind of replace it. So it would work the same as the missile that comes with it, but it's really a gray headed missile or whatever. But anyways, this works as well. Um, you load up the missile, it's spring loaded. And then in the back, you can just press on this and it's gonna launch it out just like that. So real basic feature for the time. Uh, I think the, I actually got the missile from the Imperial Landing Craft. So they had been using this on a few sets back then. I think it was fairly new. This might've actually been the first set it came with. Um, if you can think of any other sets that had that missile launcher before this, let me know. But yeah, this is kind of where they started to revolutionize the idea of playability with their sets and actually bringing like missiles and that sort of thing into it. But yeah, definitely good features. It makes this so it's not just like a paperweight. There's actually some sort of an effect to it. Um, for building mocks, I think it's actually really good. I think the displayability, while the build isn't entirely accurate to the movie, uh, just some of the features on it make it look really good in a mock. It's kind of a simple build, not a whole lot to it. Lots of exposed studs and whatnot, but I think it's really good. And it's obviously something they haven't done since, and they're probably never gonna do again, unless they do it for like 20th anniversary episode three or whatnot. But uh, really quite an interesting design choice for them to go ahead and do this from the movie with all of the different builds they could have done. So cool that they got it somewhat right and just like to have this is actually a pretty rare build. Uh, so it's cool that there's good features to it and just for the time, it's it's a cool set, it's just, it's just classic. But it really is the addition of this that really sells it for me. Uh, I just like, like I said, this is probably my favorite part of the set. It's so simple, but just the two uh, rare exclusive clones. There's actually a magnet of these clones at one point in time, but that was temporary and not a real minifigure, if you will, but just, the build here really complements this quite well. I don't know that they're supposed to be, like, I feel like the set tries to sell itself as 
like these two go against each other, like the clones somehow go against the uh, Jedi and Wookiees, which if you play the Lego Star Wars video game from 2006, that's kind of the case. Like the clones turn on them and then you have to fight the clones or whatever, but they're both Republic allies, they're both Republic vehicles, so they can go against each other, I guess. But as a kid, they probably would have fought each other because kids don't really know the difference between stormtroopers and clone troopers back when episode three came out. But anyways, um, again, before the Clone Wars TV series and clones really had personality or whatever. Yeah, I think the two builds go together very well. And just again, it, it sells the set. It's just classic to have uh, both of those together. So all together, uh, I think the figures are a 10 out of 10, just without a doubt, just you get those six figures and just in a $50 set, six figures is good anyways. But uh, just getting six really cool figures and three exclusive figures at that, and then the other three are fairly rare for the time. I guess except the Chewbacca, everything else is pretty rare, but uh, just cool figures, 10 out of 10 without a doubt. That's probably why you would buy this set now is if you wanted those older figures. Uh, the sets without the figures go for about $100, but with the figures, it's probably more like $200, $250 used. So definitely cool with those figs. Uh, that's really what sells a lot of these old classic sets, just figures that LEGO probably won't make again. A light up Luminara or the 442nd clones, probably not gonna happen, obviously. But the builds for the time are actually really good. Uh, I think LEGO used the full capacity of what they had at the time. So I actually really enjoy those. Um, I gotta give it like an eight out of 10 for the period. Uh, nowadays, obviously these bills would not hold up, but I don't wanna judge the set based on today's standards. I wanna look at it back in 2005, what it's like. And I think it's actually really good. I think it's probably an 8 out of 10 build. So all together, probably a solid 9 out of 10 set back in 2005. I think this is probably one of people's favorite sets from the classic LEGO Star Wars era. So I've always wanted it. Glad I could finally get it and review it for you guys. And just like be able to have it in hand is something special and not an opportunity that a whole lot of people get to have. So I'd like to thank you all for viewing. Go ahead and let me know if you have this set, if you remember this set when you were little like I do, and uh, just like what you think about this set. Is it overrated? Is it just the lenses of nostalgia that hype us to this set, or is it actually a good set, all said and done? Regardless, the value is great on this thing. Uh, if you bought this back in the old days, you have a set easily worth 10 times its value in today's money. So uh, investment sake, this is a really good set to pick up on. Those clones right there, especially this build right over on the right side here, is just worth its weight in gold now. Uh, definitely desirable. So it's one of the cooler features of this set as well. So thank you all for viewing. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe for more content like this. Glad you all could join me. If you made it this far, go ahead and comment down below so I know. Uh, go ahead and comment 442nd clone for, uh, for the great uh, value of the exclusive figure there. Anyways, thank you all for viewing. Stay tuned for more content like this. I'm going to try to get out more classic reviews on just old valuable sets like this. So thank you all for viewing and stay tuned. And as always, guys, have a great day.